Okay, my clock says eight o'clock Eastern time. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to Stepping Stones to AAC. Happy Halloween. So I'm so glad that all of you could join us this evening for our spooky themed Stepping Stones class tonight. We have prepared a few videos to go over with you and some core words that we can use while we are trick-or-treating. So thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, so for our classroom, welcome to our Stepping Stone classroom. We kind of jazzed it up a little bit to make it a little bit more spooky for Halloween and Heather and I are in costumes. I am the unicorn <laughs> bitmoji, that is me. Brittany Tony. I don't think I introduced myself, so I apologize. My name is Brittany Tony, and I am an assistive technology consultant for Saltillo. I cover southwestern Ohio, Indiana, and northern Kentucky. So if you live in any of those states or areas, I will be your consultant. And I also have Heather Prenovo with me. I'll let her introduce herself. Hello, everyone. I am the pumpkin. I couldn't find any other cute costumes. Brittany got the good one. Um, I am also a speech language pathologist and assistive technology consultant for Saltillo, and I cover Minnesota and Wisconsin. So we're uh, staying warm up north this week. <laughs> and as you will notice, if you've not been to our classroom before, on our bookshelf, we have a variety of icons. Those are symbol sticks icons that represent each of the trainings that we have already completed. If you would like to view those trainings, you can go to our Saltillo brand YouTube channel to view trainings such as reading a book, going through photo albums, a fall walk, or dress up, getting dressed. So, which would also be very um, relevant for this evening, right? So dressing up and getting dressed. So. Okay, so we just wanted to, AAC is a journey, and so we hope that with these stepping stones to AAC presentations that we can get you started on your journey, whether you're a speech pathologist newer to AAC, or you're just looking for some ideas for your the parents or caregivers that you work with to implement AAC at home, or if you're a parent and wanting to learn some more ways how to do this in daily activities. So in the so material, today, in the materials ahead, tab, sorry. there are those three handouts that Brittany mentioned at the beginning. <clears throat> the first one you see on the screen is called the organizational tool. And we'll be filling one out together tonight as we go through the presentation, but feel free to download and save that PDF. You can reuse it. Um, as a planning tool to think about what core words you want to target with your student or your child. And then we'll talk about how you can plan what you're going to model for them on their device. The other handout or one of the other handouts is the um, reference tool is the label. And this is just for you when you take it with you or if you're going to share it with others, it describes each of the steps that we're going to go through tonight. Um, it gives you a little bit more information to help you remind um, what to do, how to think about it, how to plan for interacting with AAC and your child. Okay, so let's start with trick-or-treating. That's gonna be the theme for this evening. I know there's many different themes that we can go with for Halloween, but that's the theme that we're gonna stick with tonight. So my house, Halloween is all about getting dressed up and going trick-or-treating. I have two, well, I guess one of them's not a toddler anymore, <laughs> one three-year-old and one five-year-old. And believe it or not, you can incorporate a great deal of core words when going trick-or-treating. Even if this year it's just in your backyard or at your inside your house, kind of like an Easter egg hunt or something. So also Halloween and trick-or-treating is fun for individuals of all ages. I know I myself enjoy getting dressed up as well. And who doesn't like getting free candy? I know I like to steal my kids' candy Most because I can't eat it all, right? <laughs> exactly. And the core word... <laughs> 
that we are going to discuss today can also be generalized to other activities as well. And the core words that I've chosen to target during this activity can be, it's really up to your discretion. The words that I chose may not be the words that you chose. You can use words like walk when you're going trick or treating. I mean, just so just keep that in mind as we're going through this as well. So this is our low time. Sorry, go ahead. It's so hard when we can't see each other, you know, being across the country. Um, it's terrible. Hi. <laughs> We'll get in sync. Uh, the last handout that you have is our low tech board. And so if you don't have a student's device or your child's device in front of you, you can always model and practice using the low tech board. So this is based off the word power 60 basic file with a few extra words. And um, it's great to have those lying around uh, to model if you can't touch their device um, or just to practice where things are located. So if you are able to print that out or have a device next to you, um, that'll be helpful as we go through and practice and find words. So it's good to also just kind of familiarize yourself with the words on here because the majority of them are core words. So as Brittany shows you the videos coming up, you can be looking at it and thinking about what words you're hearing. Okay, so I'm going to turn my volume up. Just let me know if you cannot hear this video. We will do some troubleshooting. All right, we're here at our first store for trick or treating. We have our bucket. What are we going to do first? That's great. We're going to knock on the door and we're going to wait for them to open it. We have to open the door for us to get candy. Right? They open the door for us. How nice! open. Now let's tell them what we want to get candy. Get candy, please. Thank you. Get more candy. Thank you. Oh, remember, tell them your brother cannot have candy. No candy for brother. Thank you. He got a pencil instead. Bye. Okay, so I know that was, it's harder to do these videos when you don't have a child with you available, but that is what we got to work with these days. So, okay, so now with the words that you heard me use, we're just type in the chat window, what words you heard me using. We're gonna choose three core words that you heard me use during that video, using your low tech board as a guide. I heard get. Open, get, yep. Want, mm -hmm. uh -huh. more. Yep. Any other ones? I also said thank you. I was just gonna. Which is a social. All right, let's go. I guess it's more of a social word. Okay, here we go. So, good job. Thank you for participating. <laughs> so, we are going to talk about open ended questions, and we use open ended questions to encourage communication. If you're not familiar, an open ended question is a question that cannot be answered with a yes or no response, or a question that will just be answered with just one word or a phrase that does not continue the conversation. So with open-ended questions, we're really looking for a way to continue the conversation and encourage that communication for our AAC users. And writing down a script ahead of time, which is what we're going to do here in a second, gives us le less to think about during that activity, especially if you're newer to modeling with your AAC user. So, just a little quiz. Which of the following is an open-ended question? Do you want candy or what are we going to do tonight? I know you guys got this. We're going to have to start thinking of harder questions. The one on the right. <laughs> <laughs> you are <Yeah>. correct. 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Good job, guys. So with do you want candy, our device user can only say yes or no. Either they do or they don't. With what are we going to do tonight, they can say something like eat candy, get candy, dress up, go walk. There's so many things that you can talk about when you say what are we going to do tonight versus do you want candy. And I kind of think of it as also like an errorless way of getting them to communicate. So no matter what they respond with, usually it pertains to the question and you don't have to guess. For sure. So now we're going, I want you guys to type in the chat window again, some questions, open-ended questions that we can either use to prompt our AAC user to use the target word, get, open or thank you or an open-ended question where we can model that word so it can be part of the question or it could be the response to the question what are we going yeah. to get nice wrong i was typing in the chat window sorry <laughs> what are we going to get good good yeah maybe they could say candy or they could say Treat or surprise. What do you want to get? Nice. Yes. For those of our AAC users who can't have candy, um, what about open? What open ended questions can we use with the word open? I thought of who will open, like who will open the door or who will open the candy. Yeah, yeah, you could use this not only for opening the door, but also for opening candy. Mm -hmm. And even if we were just modeling a phrase like, I open and make it a question, um, you know, trying to prompt them to talk a little bit more. Which candy should we open? I like it. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. Yeah. Okay, what about thank you? What open-ended questions could we ask with the word thank you? This is a little bit harder. I was thinking of what should we say or what do we say? What do we say next? That's, yeah. What should we say? That's what I always tell my kids. So maybe <laughs> a thank you is, again, you could use so many word, core words with this activity, but I thought thank you was a good social word that we could add because we haven't had many of those through our, through this series yet. Good to mix it any up. Any other thoughts? Again, I think that's probably the, the easiest one. What should we say or what can we say? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so next, we are going to talk about comments. So when we are writing a script for comments, we wanna think about what comments we can model for our AAC user. So if your child's not yet responding to open-ended questions, this is when you can model comments. So we're going to write down one to two comments that you can model for your child in response to the, your open-ended question. So if we asked them, what, what can you say? We can model, thank you, thank you for candy, something like that. So keep them at or just above their language level. This is a recommendation that we often give is that modeling, we should not model more than two to three words beyond how many the AAC user is currently saying. So if your AAC user is only using one word phrases to communicate, they're in that stage one of communication with the AAC, then only model two to three words. If they're at the three word level where they're combining three words together, then you can model four to five words or five to six words. You can model a whole sentence. We don't want to overwhelm them and model too much. So that's just a 
good rule of thumb to keep in mind when we're modeling comments or another even questions. Another thing to keep in mind too, as you're modeling, don't be too worried about modeling every word that you're saying. So if you're saying a two to three word sentence, you don't have to model all three of those words. So focus, that's why we're picking just a couple of words, focus in on those words and you can just model that. You'll say your whole sentence, but you might just press the one button um, to model on their device and then slowly also be building up how many buttons you're pressing. Okay, so we're going back here to our planning sheet and what comments, oops, sorry, my computer doesn't like to cooperate with me. There we go. What comments can we model for the word get? This could be a two or three word phrase. First one that came to my head was get candy. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Maybe get more. Yeah, get more candy. Oh, yeah. Or maybe like in the video I was modeling just in case you're eight. get dressed up. Oh, that's perfect. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Or I was thinking in the in the video, if your AAC user cannot, um, let's get going, yeah, um, cannot get candy, we can say something like get treat or no get candy. Maybe. Or I get it. Yeah. There's lots of things you can model for the word get. Okay, what about open? <laughs> open I like it, know? Judith. You are yes. after my heart, yes. That's what my three-year-old says <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> Open door. Yep. Open hey, and I door. are thinking the same. Yes. Yeah. Open more. Ooh, I like that. Open chocolate candy. We can put a modifier in there. Um, or open red candy or something like that. Or open yeah. first. Mm hmm Open first, yeah. Usually what we okay, talk about. What about now. thank you? What what can we model for the word thank you? Thank you for yeah. the candy. Mm -hmm. For the candy. Thank you for the treat. Say is on our core board that we have. So we can even say, say thank you. Yeah, just say thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or even starting to include, um, if it's a neighbor they know, including names as kind of a fun oh, yeah. addition to. Thank you, Miss. Shirley or something. Mm -hmm. Yes, addressing people is another important social skill. That's great. Okay. So step three you see here on this screenshot that I already filled it in. But how will you model? So we wrote our scripts and again I just filled these in based on what I, just my own thinking, but you guys did way better than I did. But what, um, with step three, we just kind of write it out again, but with our models, we're just kind of breaking it down even more. So, okay, I have a script and I have a comment for my script and my question. What two or three word model can I then use with these, with these words? And maybe if they're only at, a single word level, or maybe they're just learning, they just got their device, maybe you're only modeling one word. So, or if they are using one word, your two or three word model might be something in the right hand column. And then, oh, did I not? I forgot to <laughs> put on my Brett's 
squares on this one. My, I'm so sorry. Or maybe I did. Maybe there is another thing on a second. Oh, I did. I didn't. Okay, there we go. They were, my chat box is covering my next screen, so I'm sorry. Okay, so open. This is just where they're located on your little tech board, just to give you an idea. Get, you can even highlight these with, you know, cutting a square on a post-it note on your low tech board or something. And then there's thank you. And that's the key that piece with all of this is that it seems like maybe a lot of work to write out a script or plan all this ahead of time. But until you get more comfortable with what to model, where things are located, it's helpful to have you know, some backup plans. So if you're thinking, oh, they're ready for two or three words, but maybe today they only were doing one. Now you've got your little script uh, set aside to help you on the fly. And then to find them ahead of time, even though I've worked with this low tech board for I don't know how many years, I still struggle to remember where more is located on that board. And so practice and actually like touch the de device, touch the board um, to find those words and make it more automatic. And that's kind of the idea behind it is that do a lot of this now to get really comfortable and make it more automatic so that you don't have to think it through. You don't get anxious or have to worry about what's going to happen in the moment. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a video of me modeling using these core words. So I wanted to point out in this video that I am using a flip book based on some feedback that we received from previous series, um, seminars in this series, we received some feedback to, do, to, to show some low tech options. And this flip book is actually available on our website. If you go to saltillo.com and then chat corner, there's a low tech board download section, and this is free. You can download it. It's also might be a good good option for trick-or-treating especially if it's maybe raining or maybe it's a little cold or maybe it's snowing where you are during trick-or-treating you can take this with you as an option so you don't have to worry about getting the device lost or dropped or broken or wet so just another option and so i am modeling using this flipbook and this flipbook is the word power 60 basic flipbook so I'll show you how I use the word, how I model the words get, open, and thank you using this flipbook. Oh, whoops, sorry. Forgot to. All right, we're at our first house. What are we gonna do? We have our bucket. What do we need to do first? Knock. Now we need to wait for them to open that door. We're gonna open the door. Oh, look, they opened the door for us. The door is open. Now let's tell them that we want to get candy. They get candy, please. Here's our candy. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the candy. Oh, remember, your brother cannot have candy. No candy. No get candy for brother. Good. We can say thank you. Bye bye. Okay, so I hope that showed you how to use a flipbook with some core words and modeling with some fringe in there. I did want to note I did modify that eats page, the the eat page to I just superimposed the candy icon on top of one of the icons that I didn't think was relevant. So just so you know, the candy one is not standard. You would just have to download a separate candy icon for through chat editor. 
Okay, so after trying the steps with the video, do you have questions still? How do you feel about everything? Oh, you're so welcome, Natalia. I hope, yeah, I really hope that was helpful. I know we had some requests for showing some low tech options. You could definitely just use the low tech board as well, but I like the book option because then you can get some of the fringe words like candy and some other words in there. So if you didn't want to use candy, maybe it was a toy or something that they want to get. So. So our emails are listed there. You're welcome to contact us. And let us know if you have other suggestions or questions. We'd be happy to help out. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that you all enjoy your Halloween, even though it may look a little bit different for some of us this year. <laughs>